The Bank of Korea froze its key interest rate for the sixth consecutive time. As its dilemma deepens amid persisting uncertainties, markets are focused on when a rate cut would come. But the central bank says the Hamas-Israel war could further drive the prices and may even consider a rate hike down the road. For more on the BOK's latest rate decision and some clues to future projections, we now turn to Professor Yang jin who joins us on the line. Good morning, Professor Yang. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's begin with Bank of Korea Governor Lee Chang Yong's statement saying that the biggest reason behind the rate freeze is uncertainties, repeating that very word 18 times throughout his announcement. Could you first elaborate for us on the BOK's persisting dilemma? Okay, well, right now, Korea has good reasons to lower the rates and also good reasons to raise the rates. On the uh, side of lowering the rates, economic slowdown. Uh, is uh, getting worse. Uh, Korean uh, gro- uh, estimated growth rate for this year is substantially below the potential growth rate. Uh, we are projected to uh, grow by, by about 1.4%, uh, but Korea's potential or normal growth rate is somewhere in the low 2% range, so we're almost one full percentage point below uh, where our potential is. And then secondly, uh, if we raise interest rates, uh, then that means more interest burden on households and corporate uh, uh, corporations because our household debt and corporate debt is so high. Uh, and if the interest burden goes up, they will do less consumption, less investment, which will make any recovery if it starts a lot longer and smaller. But on the other hand, uh, the aside for raising the rates, inflation rates are still high. The uh, 12-month inflation rate or headline inflation is 3.7%, uh, and that is rising, not falling. Uh, and then core inflation rate, while it is uh, generally on the falling trend, uh, it's uh, still very high, uh, depending on how you measure it. It's uh, 3.8% or 3.3% over 12 months. And that, again, is substantially uh, higher than the uh, Bank of Korea's goal of 2%. And it's not falling quite as quickly as the authorities want or uh, it's, uh, it's moving down slower than we were, how it, uh, we thought uh, at the uh, beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, Korean won is depreciating. Uh, it's losing value. We expected this because the uh, difference between the Korean interest rate and the U.S. interest rate is so high at two percentage points. Uh, but uh, it seems to be accelerating in the last couple of uh, uh weeks and it uh, also seems like it's getting more unstable that is it's getting more volatile uh and then uh the uh, governor lee mentioned unpredictability and that comes through uh the uh israeli hamas uh conflict that we're having right now Mm -hmm. uh depending on whether the uh, conflict expands beyond the current israeli and gaza strip uh geographical area uh, if it does go beyond that area, uh, we expect gas prices to rise uh, substantially. Uh, under the worst case scenario, gas uh, prices may rise to $150 per barrel. That's way higher than where it was last uh, year. Uh, so, and so that's one uncertainty. The second uncertainty is how, what the U.S. will do with the uh, their interest rates. The FOMC has uh, been giving a uh, signal through most of the year that the, uh, there will be at least one more rate increase uh, during the second half of the year before the end of the year. Right now, they're giving some signals that perhaps not uh, because the uh, U.S. Uh, 10-year Treasury bond yields uh, have gone up so much. Uh, but if the Fed raises the, uh, decides to raise the rates once more, uh, then that interest rate gap between Korea and U.S. will rise to 2.25 percentage points, and that's uh, bound to create some instabilities in the uh, currency market. So basically, uh, we don't know which direction to go. So at least for this particular uh, FOM, uh, this particular uh, BOK monetary policy meeting, uh, the uh, BOK punted. 
Uh, Dr. Yang, as you've alluded to, the Hamas-Israel war is complicating the calculations of central banks across the globe, frankly, not just South Korea. But now the Bank of Korea is hinting at a possible rate hike should the war rage on for longer than expected, as it would heighten inflationary pressures. The BOK has long asserted that its number one priority is price stabilization. Do you expect a rate hike ahead? Okay, well, uh, I think, at least in my opinion, uh, right now, the uh, case for raising the rates are slightly higher than case for lowering the rates. Uh, now, uh, the one reason that we can cite is the inflation. As I said, inflation is uh, higher than the uh, BOK's uh, goals, and uh, the inflation rate actually has risen from a low of 2.3% in July to currently, or at least in September, 3.7%. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Uh, I don't think this is a very strong case by itself uh, because most of the uh, rise in inflation is due to oil and food prices, and these are uh, very volatile, and it's not really under the control of Bank of Korea. Uh, But uh, the uh, main reason why I think uh, Korea uh, should raise rates is actually household and corporate debt. Uh, now, uh, Korea's household and corporate debt has been rising very quickly. Uh, partially for household debt, that's because of the housing prices going back up. Uh, but uh, Korea's household and corporate debt seems to be reaching uh, very dangerous levels. Uh, it's not only the size of the household and corporate debt, which uh, with, for household debt, Korea is in, within, usually within the top three of any country's Uh, which are being examined for corporate debt, it's usually within the top five. Uh, We've seen lately how China uh, can get into problems uh, because of the uh, high private debt, household debt and corporate debt, and Korea's uh, getting up there. Uh, So if we have higher interest rates, we may be able to slow down or even reverse the rise in household and corporate debt. And I think that's the uh, most... uh, that's the best argument that you can make hmm. for raising the interest rate. The, uh, then there's a third reason, which is the currency market, which I talked about in the last question. Hmm. Uh, if we allow the uh, uh, interest rate gap to continue at this uh, very high levels or even increase, uh, then we may have even more uh, volatility in the uh, uh, Korean one uh, dollar exchange rate. And even if it does remain relatively stable, the uh, yuan is going to continue to depreciate, and that is going to feed into uh, higher inflation for Korea through uh, higher import prices. So I think the case is slightly larger for having a high interest rate. Mm -hmm. And if the price of oil goes up, that's uh, bound to to increase the uh, inflation rates even higher. Uh, So the case, I think, gets stronger. Uh, but despite Korea's snowballing household debt, uh, the BOK chose not to raise rates. And one of the risks to consider is China's sluggish recovery. Now, China's third quarter growth exceeded projections, offering hope that it will meet Beijing's target growth of 5% this year. Uh, what do you think has led to that surprise growth, Dr. Yang? Yeah, China really did surprise us all. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you just remember, uh, maybe a month ago, China has been experiencing serious economic slowdown because of the uh, private debt that we talked about in the last question. Mm. It it turned out that China had an incredible amount of household debt, corporate debt, and uh, debt for the regional government. They're all tied to their real estate and housing construction uh, sectors uh, because they used those sectors a lot in the past to try to uh, pump the uh, economy into a higher growth rate whenever they get into a a, uh, economic slowdown. Uh, But what happened here, uh, initially the government was central government, which did have some resources that they could use for expansionary uh, fiscal policy. They were very reluctant to have an active uh, expansionary fiscal policy because they thought that they would be making debt problems worse. Uh, But what they did was they tried to expand uh, investment in the manufacturing sector, and that is uh, starting to prove uh, very successful. Uh, fixed asset investment uh, increased 3.1% in the first nine months of the year compared to the uh, same period a year ago, uh, and investment in China's 
manufacturing sector more specifically expanded at 6.2 percent uh, and investment in high-tech industries increased by 11.4 percent investment in high-tech manufacturing and high-tech services uh, rose by 11.3 percent and 11.8 percent respectively especially in aviation spacecraft medical equipment uh, those really did incredibly well mm-hmm. and then uh, foreign direct investment also played a very large part. We thought that foreign direct investment would not rise in China by much because of the current conflict between the uh, China and U.S. dealing with uh, investment into China. And obviously, a foreign direct investment by United States didn't rise by all that much. But by other countries, it did rise very substantially in the uh, last eight uh, months or so. China's manufacturing industry, uh, FDI, grew by 6.8% year-on-year in the first eight months of 2023. Uh, And if you just look at the high-tech manufacturing sector, then it rose by 19.7%. And the uh, rise in FDI came from mostly European countries like uh, United Kingdom, France, Switzerland, Netherlands and Germany. In fact, uh, foreign direct investment from uh, United Kingdom and France uh, more than doubled uh, this year compared to last year, uh, year on year. Um, So uh, on the other hand, infrastructure investment, which is how central government usually tried to pump the economy, those are a bit down. And then China uh, seems to be, uh, because perhaps of the higher investment, uh, industrial production has risen by 4.5%, and retail sales have risen by uh, 5.5% in September from a year earlier. Uh, so their uh, in manufacturing investment strategy seems to be paying off, and China seems to be doubling down on the manufacturing industry investment. Uh, during the uh, third Belt and Road Forum that they had a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. Chinese President Xi Jinping announced that China will remove all restrictions on FDI in the manufacturing sector. So it remains to be seen uh, where, uh, ha- whether they uh, actual how much they actually mean this, how much uh, restriction they will actually remove. Uh, but I think given the uh, latest numbers, it is uh, very true that the... Uh, rise in investment in the manufacturing sector is, uh, at least so far, uh, keeping the uh, Chinese economy uh, growth uh, larger than what we expected just a couple of months ago. Uh, When asked about whether we can expect a rate hike perhaps at the end of next year, uh, BOK Governor Lee Chang-yong said that it's too early to make a call, but tightening policy will likely continue for uh, quite some time. It looks like it won't be any time soon, but markets are, of course, all focused on when the rates would begin slipping down again. When do you expect the long tightening policy will come to an end, Dr. Yang? Okay, well, let me start with a caveat. If the Korean economic slowdown really, really gets bad, uh, then BOK, I think, will have no choice but to lower the rates. Uh, but that's not going to be exactly good news because that means that you, uh, Korean growth is so weak that we have no choice but to uh, go against uh, the uh, current uh, trend in global uh, interest rates and follow the footsteps of countries like uh, Japan or uh, China, which are uh, or had been uh, having such low growth rates. Now, uh, given that caveat, uh, I think... Uh, until the U.S. firmly signals that they will uh, lower the interest rate or at least they will no longer raise the interest rates, Korea cannot uh, lower interest rates by itself. And that's because the uh, interest rate gap between the U.S. and uh, Korea is uh, so high to begin with. Mm. And the uh, currency markets seems to be starting to feel that. Uh, and... Uh, so uh, until the U.S. Uh, signals that uh, they will no longer raise the rates, I think uh, BOK will not con- seriously consider uh, lowering the interest rate. Uh, but I think there's a longer-term uh, problem that we have to talk about, which mm-hmm. is uh, if the uh, BOK and U.S. decides to lower the rate, 
how far can it go down? Mm -hmm. And the reason is that in the last dot chart that was published by the uh, U.S. Fed in uh, on last September, they envisioned their long-term interest rates going down to about 2.5 percent, which is about the uh, inflation, about the interest rate that they had to, uh, before the uh, 2008. Uh, global financial crisis, and it's nowhere near the uh, interest rates on the zero point zero percent level that we saw during the pandemic. Uh, and right now, the U.S. Uh, policy rates by, set by the Fed is at five point five percent. Korean rates are three point five percent. But so uh, the United States is expected in the long term, and that's about three or four years. To reduce the interest rates by three percentage points, but Korea cannot do that. Uh, Korea may be able to sustain a uh, interest rate reversal where Korean rates are lower uh, for a period of time. The longest period that we had for interest rate reversals in the past was 25 months. Mm -hmm. uh, Korea's uh, right now in about uh, 15th month of Korea's uh, interest rate reversal. Uh, so we may be able to do it for another year or so, uh, mm. but eventually we're going to have to uh, keep the rates higher than the United States. So uh, if the U.S. really lowers its interest rates to uh, long-term 2.5%, uh, Korea's interest rate will probably not be able to go below 3%. So while the U.S. can re uh, lower their interest rate by 3 percentage points, Korea... Uh, can only lower it by perhaps 0. Uh, 0. 0.5 percentage points or maybe a percentage point and then raise it back up so that in the long term, Korean rates will remain higher than uh, the U.S. rates. That means Korea has a lot less room to lower interest rates, even mm -hmm. if we do decide to lower it. Uh, so uh, if you believe that Korea will go back to the uh, interest rates during the uh, what we saw during the pandemic or even before the pandemic after 2008 when we kept our interest rate on the 0.0% range or 1% range mm. well we're probably never going back to those days again <laughs> uh, we're probably going to end up uh, somewhere in the high 2% range or low 3% range in the long run uh, and if you have any type of uh, uh, loans that has to be paid out in the long run, mm. well, that's what you can expect. The BOK has one more monetary policy meeting in the month of November. Fed has one more FOMC meeting in late December, so we'll keep tabs on that. Uh, in the meantime, Dr. Young, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.